to our morning show on women, wealth, and power, and social change. We are having a set of conversations that are really focused on unpacking what has not worked with philanthropy and this tremendous opportunity we have today to really do things differently, to do things better. And women are a key part of that conversation. And today we have a very special guest, Mary M. Wende. Mary, it is so great to see you. Hello. Hey, it's great. It's great to be here. And thank you for having me, Alex. Absolutely. I mean, I just want to share that, you know, Mary and I met a lifetime ago, I would say 2009 in Kenya. And Mary, you are definitely one of the biggest inspirations behind wanting to have a conversation like this. Your story is an incredible inspiration and, and something that we're going to be so excited to talk about. And so without further ado, I actually, I want to hand it over to you and, and give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your journey. Okay, thanks, Alex. I've watched you from the sidelines. I've worked with you. I've grown up looking at you, looking up to you. So thanks for everything that you do and your authenticity. I love that. So my name is Mary Mwende, and uh, I grew up in Kenya, went to primary school, secondary school in Kenya. And just in context and in perspective of this conversation, I've grown up fully, um, especially with my education, as a beneficiary, which now is not a word that we use as much in terms of philanthropy and charity, we do use the word participants into your program um, of NGOs, of charity, of scholarships, um, from whether it's merit, whether it's goodwill through and through, uh, through my primary school, my high school, and even my university. And then with my uh, tertiary education, I did my tertiary education in the American University in Dubai did my bachelor's, did my MBA as well there. And all of that has been through the works of philanthropy. Um, and that's why I think this story is very, very relevant to my story as well. Um, and I can speak as a participant into the philanthropy world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and basically just in, in short, that is my story. It's amazing, Mary. And I I know we only have 20 minutes today and there's so much yeah. I want to talk about, but I, I will say that, you know, having the opportunity to, to meet you in Kenya in 2009, you know, as we were all connected through this program called the Global Give Back Circle, founded and started by Linda Lockhart, which, you know, was very inspirational. I, I remember being so humbled and just overall inspired by meeting you and, and, and all of these amazing adolescent girls that, you know, were really striving to, to find a pathway for their future. And it was really at a time when I was also part of a generation, I think, you know, involved in this world of philanthropy where we were learning how important it was to shift our mindset in a direction of, no one needs us to go out there and save them. You know, pe people in, in whether it's Africa, uh, Asia, Latin America, or Europe or the US, you know, anyone who, who might be struggling, our role really is to help remove obstacles, to, to help individuals have all the opportunities, the tools to, to thrive and fulfill their dreams. And I saw, so much hope and inspiration in you and your journey and your, in your hunger to do everything you could to really pursue that path. And I think now having watched your evolution as this yeah. entire conversation around philanthropy is happening, what really came to mind is that, you know, women from emerging markets, stories such as yours, Mary, are often still painted from the lens of, of problems, poverty, you know, here's what happened. We're not hearing stories of 
transformation, success, possibilities. And yet you are thriving. You are the future. Your story goes beyond that starting point as a participant in philanthropy. And so maybe tell us your perspective on that, Mary. Um, yes, so thanks for that. I think, um, first of all, just starting from primary school and then high school when I was a beneficiary at that time or participant of the global give back circle, which I still am um, as someone who has been involved. I really love this program. I have my sisters there. Um, that was the story then. These were girls who had been in disadvantaged families and then the story stopped there. Now, what I did not include in my introduction is that I am a brand manager um, at Johnson & Johnson. Um, I manage women's health. So three brands, Stay Free, OB and Carefree. Um, in the two digit dollar, um, millions of dollars <laughs> uh, <laughs> brands. And that is a story that we don't see being told, for instance. I think it's it also gotten to a point where the, the way we introduce ourselves um, as benefactors of programs that have been introduced into, into Africa, into our schools, into our villages where we live, is it stops there. Mm -hmm. It just stops there. What you've done by yourself to actually take the baton mm -hmm. from there to make sure that you know, you're moving forward, you're thriving, that is not a story that we see very often. And then that cascades into us actually probably even feeling shy about sharing your successes, sharing where you are. Um, and I think that's where you're touching on in terms of the stories that we have. And there's multiple of us, hundreds and hundreds of us that have very, very, very successful stories um, that could be told to inspire girls back home. Because our stories do not just end with I came, I helped you, you were poor, and this is where I got you. But then what after that? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so with me, for instance, my take on this, I think, first of all, you're dealing with women, you're dealing with girls yes. who are very, very brilliant. Um, at the very least, the thing that we've lacked, I would, for my story, for instance, is We've had, like you just said, we've had obstacles. We've had lack of resources to help us get to the next step. And when you come in or when an NGO comes in and puts in, removes those obstacles or gives us you know, a helping hand to go to the next step, um, from then on, the work is on the, benef the beneficiary. The work is on the girl. The work is on those women that you're helping from wherever they are. If you're, built, if you're digging a borehole somewhere, after that, it really depends on them on how they use it. Um, and then they put in the work after that. And I think my take on this is that there's more to do with sustainability of what you're doing than just coming, doing a one stint kind of thing, and then, <laughs> having the PR for maybe a year or two. And then these are lives, these are people, these are ideas, these are human beings who are going to live way after, probably way after your program is on ground, you know, mm -hmm. and they will continue living regardless. Absolutely. So that's my take. I think it, it takes way more than just coming in, having a story told from a very, from a very, <laughs> focused lens and not having to look at the whole perspective of the lens and not having to look at the next 10 years, for instance. If I was to put in $10,000 now and it's going to only help in the next five years, then what happens after five years? If you really want to make an impact and you want that impact to get back to the community and then have a change, a ripple effect, then it needs just more than a PR stint or a two-year investment. <laughs> right. No, and I mean, you, you touch on so many important things. I mean, it, it really hits on the fact that we should be focused on transformation. You know, what is that long-term transformation? And, and, you know, when I'm making all, when I'm sharing all these points and, you know, having had now 
you know, several conversations with different uh, stakeholders in the industry, I want to be very careful to say that I too, you know, could do better. I mean, all of us involved, you know, when we say philanthropy is broken or it's not where it needs to be, it's, it's not really about pointing fingers or, or shaming. There, there, there are pockets of greatness. I mean, this is, this is hard stuff. But at the same time, with everything that unfolded last year, what we've learned over the past decade, there is also an incredible opportunity to say, okay, but when we look at the industry at large, we are not where we need to be. And this yeah. particular area is really one that merits not just a conversation, but an entire shift in how we're thinking about doing this. So on one end, we don't wanna overthink this. We need to invest significantly more resource and just go out there and do. And, you know, Mackenzie Scott is, is one of many people who I think is demonstrating this. But at the same time, it's so important for us to look beyond step one of the journey or step two or three. The, the sustainability of our future depends on incredible women like you thriving beyond just that one moment in time where you participated in something and then... And then what? Yes. And it's, the same, it's the same with microfinance. Microfinance is great. I mean, it's had huge, huge impacts. But what happens when a woman, you know, after taking out a micro, micro credit loan, maybe doesn't just want a water connection or a toilet in her home. Maybe she wants to buy the whole farm. Maybe she's going to start a business that's actually viable for a venture capital audience. And then when we get there, there's nobody there. And so I feel very much like I will forever be a student, you know, in yeah. this industry, I'm still learning and your story really shines a light on that. And so I, where I would go with my question, Mary, is twofold. You know, if there were philanthropists or, or people who really want to do great things with their wealth, what advice would you have for them in the context of your own experience? And two, you know, if there are other young girls out, out there or just women in general who are listening to this conversation, what would you share as a learning for them in terms of your own trajectory? So two very big questions. <laughs> Yes, those are very big and very important questions, which I think, um, I mean, I, I could answer from just my own story, my perspective, um, and what I've learned along the journey. Um, for investors and philanthropists that want to do good, which is very important to have, and I think we need to have more of that, for sure. A one-off does not move the needle. That's all I would, it doesn't move the needle. If you want to move the needle, if you want to, to make a change, let's say in someone's life, um, you do need to be able to touch on different aspects. I'll give an example, for instance, when you say the woman that is going to get a microfinance loan, right? And she wants to, well, it's only enough for her to probably get water, mm -hmm. right? or maybe you know, be able to provide um, some form of food, food security for her family. There's so many aspects in that woman's life that she has to think about on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that all the dots connect. So when you think about philanthropy, think about all of the dots that need to connect in someone's life or in a project or in an idea that need to connect to the final result because it's not just one, <laughs> one part. There's so many dots that they're so interconnected, so interlinked that if one of them is left out of the loop, then you have a weak part of the chain. All of them have to come into full fruition of your philanthropy, of your program or whatever you're doing. If you're helping, for instance, kids who are disabled, mm -hmm. I recently just, worked with an NGO that is working with disabled kids, especially during COVID, you need to check through all the boxes, their mental health. Are they getting school? Are they getting food? Are they having a shelter to stay? 
are they being able to be placed into jobs after they're getting skills? Um, and then right after that, are you looking at as to how they will actually fit into the society properly as, you know, very, as acceptable members of the society, how, whatever that is, because they need to be into the society so that they can fend for themselves. So you need to look at the full circle, connect all of the dots. For women, um, once, once you are into these programs, um, if you come from the kind of background or the story that I come from, you need to question. Mm -hmm. You need to ask, let your voice be heard. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's one of the things that most of the times we, we mm -hmm. feel shy about or because you feel like you're being helped, you know? Um, and you do not want to speak up or you do not want to give your ideas. I think it's going to be very helpful even for the investors to actually learn from you because it's your story that you're giving. And the women who are coming into the philanthropy, you know our stories. Our voice is your voice and we're all existing in a very, in a very unique kind of uh, connection that if we fail as the women that you're trying to help, then your project is not working. It's mm -hmm. not going to work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's very interlinked. And if one of the, if one of the dots is missing at any point, <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it's not going to be a success story. We have to look through um, way beyond what we're looking at at the moment today. I love That's that. What I'm it's so insightful. And, you know, we've got three minutes left. Yes. <laughs> and so glad. I wish we had a whole hour together. I think that what I hear from you, which actually really resonates with one of the conversations we had yesterday, one, there's just got to be a shift in power dynamics. And, you know, if we really have or I should say, if we really are truly interested in creating a better world and, and utilizing this next crucial decade to make that happen, we have got to shift power dynamics. We should be learning from you. And it brings to another area, which is that humility. We need to have so much humility in this work. You know, one of our friends, uh, Ellen McGirt, who's, you know, a incredible journalist and, and also senior editor at Fortune was sharing that sometimes, you know, acknowledging our own ignorance is a strength. We don't know everything, you know, and embracing that and learning that from what you need um, is just so crucial, which brings me to the third point, which is that philanthropists really need to approach this work from the lens of how can I help you? You know, how do we not get in this place where I am micromanaging or controlling every aspect of this and putting a lot of resources that can do good, but it's not just about placing huge amounts of resources which are desperately needed and trying to not, you know, have everything be perfect. It's also about aligning it in a way where we truly believe transformation can happen and, and women, such as yourself, Mary, are, are the guiding light in that journey. And so I just want to thank you for what you have taught me, for our friendship, our journey together, being able to, you know, come across your way with this initiative, the Global Give Back Circle, and seeing where your journey is going now and, and the future that it presents. So thank you for being with us today, Mary. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for the work that you're doing. It's, um, it's very, very inspiring to see that people like you, women like you, are coming back and saying, hold on a minute. We need to have a different conversation around this, around philanthropy. So it's very refreshing. And thank awesome. you. Yay! Thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>